morning. Well, I have put up a video for quite a while. I have I made some, but you put them up because I didn't think they were quite. <clears throat> when you're talking like this, uh, you have to try to gauge just what people are going to be interested in that you're interested in. Because you got to be interested in it. <laughs> but I was thinking this morning of how we come into this world and we learn certain ways of uh, dealing with our lives. And it might be something that's going, we might learn a negative way of, uh, for example, uh, my sister who had just passed away this spring. Uh, she was very close to me in age, and so we uh, developed this uh, quarreling, uh, quarreling uh, pattern because my parents quarreled a lot, and she was, uh, but she was the younger, and she, I always, when I went to school, and uh, I would always try very hard not to quarrel. I didn't like to quarrel because it upset me. So, <coughs> so, uh, and I seemed to have a temperament that was more peaceful, you might say, because I didn't want to quarrel. But some of my sisters took to uh, fighting and quarreling, uh, probably listening to my mother and dad. And uh, I was always looking for different ways to. To behave, I would always think, oh, I'm not going to quarrel like those two. Oh, that's terrible. But, but what could I do? How could I, you know, if you're raised with listening to quarreling, you're going to, uh, you know, I could quarrel if I had to. Boy, I could just get in there and quarrel real good. But <laughs> uh, especially quarreling with my little sister, who I was older than she was, and I could think of just as many things to say that might a zinger that she could <clears throat> but I was always troubled with this way of communicating I just didn't like it and but uh, she uh, later on you know it, when we were adults uh, some of my sisters I would quarrel with more than I did others I had one sister who was like I was she did not like to quarrel even from the time she was a little kid so uh, she wouldn't quarrel at all with the other sister. She would just go ahead and do the work or whatever was needed to be done. And I'm not going to quarrel. Well, they might continue to quarrel for a while. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'm saying that you can develop some behaviors that are going to get such a grip on you that you might go your whole life uh, being a quarreler, for example, uh, or an eater like I did, or a drinker like he is. <laughs> so when you get old, how are you going to handle this? Uh, how are you going to handle uh, people's habits that they've gotten into? I look upon drinking or eating as something that early in life you it got a grip on you and and we didn't really recognize well I you know I knew that I had an eating problem that I would always turn to food as comfort and uh, in my older age you know I've kind of been able to fight that especially when I am punished by it very fast by not feeling very well. So I've learned not to go on a big binge like I used to and eat three times, at least twice as much as I should at a setting. And in my old age, you know, I've uh, been able to control that better, binging. And I had one sister who was a binger, but she got into bulimia and she had a terrible time with it. And she was still having a time with it before she died it, when she died in her 50s and the bulimia may have had some effect on her body you know got her body in worse shape and 
even though she never gained a pound in her life hardly. <laughs> it was at that price. So uh, she started getting quite upset about having this uh, solution to her binging. And we were even talking, I was talking to her about, well, maybe you should go and get therapy. You know, it was like a food, dis you know, a eating disorder that she was beginning to act like, well, this is bad. You know, I haven't been able to control it clear up into my uh, 40s. So, I, and I was reading where like Jane Fonda, who was putting out all these workout videos, confessed in her older age that she had done, she had been bulimic all while she was doing that. She still binged and threw <laughs> So there she was, an uh, example to America, and uh, was bulimic. So anyway, I was thinking about uh, in, in old age, uh, I, you know, I look upon eating, drinking as something that, a habit that got hold of you, and it may be such a powerful habit that you can't shake it. Uh, like, well, like me, you know, I, I can't shake my eating habit fast enough to lose weight, get down, you know, I'm happy if I could just hold it at the at the weight I am and try, you know, maybe to go down a pound or two or uh, just keep, but not have any great big goal at my age, 80, but even though overweight has obviously limited what I can do in all kinds of different ways. It's still limiting me, but I mean, I wish that I were trim and slim and I could just, you know, I would be a lot better, but yeah, I, I am far that. from that goal. <laughs> so, so uh, when are you going to start talking about your nymphomania? <laughs> Oh, God, I don't have nymphomania. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't probably have the she, opposite. She doesn't want to show it on camera, that's why. Oh, yes, well, make a joke, why don't you? But what I was going to say is what I'm trying, you know, when I get, get with alcoholic companions in my old age, I try to be very tolerant uh, of them because I want them to be tolerant of mine. <laughs> which men haven't always been. Uh, so I try to say, well, uh, like him, him, he has a lot of good qualities, believe it or not, that shine through every now and then. <laughs> believe it or not. Boy, I'll yes, tell you he what. Does. If she ever comes up with a compliment, she immediately <laughs> backhands her. He has some good oh. qualities. Believe it or not, folks. That's what he does. <laughs> well, People tend to think, oh, if he's a, an alcoholic, he doesn't have any good qualities. And I read all, I, I read blogs, I read what women are talking about it with alcoholics, and I, I think I think the biggest mistake that people make is not is because alcoholism is such a it's always been a, a scapegoat. You know, it's the worst because it affects your behavior a little more than say eating you know if I go on a binge eating I don't tend to show it people tend not to know it as much as if he goes on one well, <laughs> I, I know it I say oh well, I run for the hills he's on a I mean he come pound on my door uh 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 and I say get out of here <laughs> yeah once but in when six I years, binge and eat deal. candy bar you know I don't go down and pound on his door and make a big <laughs> Let everybody know that I've gone on a binge drink. Well, I guarantee you way I more than I usually do. So it's always iffy, you know, is the alcoholic gonna uh, get completely out of hand? And so, uh, and I've set my mind to enjoy uh, my alcoholic companion in my old age as much as I possibly can. <laughs> As much as he will let me, well, I, uh, but I think it's up to my character. It's your character. What? I think it's basically what am I? I like to be kind to old ladies. I really do. 
you know, <laughs> yeah, right. help you across the street, <laughs> go to the grocery he store. Does. Yes, I mean, it's, it's be kind to old ladies, you know, I mean. Well, it's been a godsend. Uh, you know, my kids all live far away, and since I had this bad neck, I couldn't, lost my, kind of lost my sense of balance when it was at its worst, and I couldn't walk very far without hanging on to something, and he's uh, gone and got my medicines and did the things that I wasn't able to do, and uh, I thought, boy, he comes in handy. Boy, I better hang on to him because... Uh, <laughs> My kids right. don't even live anywhere near. I, I, the nice thing about it is that <laughs> if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have anybody to browbeat. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Uh, you know, I couldn't. You have seen her attack me physically mm. on camera more than once. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. In fact, it's usually, uh, uh, yeah, this is what. It's usually every time we do a video sooner. Well, or I, uh, you know, he's good this way. You know, I can go like this, and it's kind of in fun. But I remember uh, I had one alcoholic husband that uh, uh, when he drank, he was, uh, he had a bad temper even when he was, you know, when he wasn't drinking. So when he drank, he would watch out. And, uh, and anyway, one time he, uh, we got in a fight over disciplining our little boy and he just hauled off and slapped me. And I thought, and I was pregnant and I thought, I'm just going to slap him back. Uh, he probably won't do anything to me since I'm pregnant. Oh, wrong! <laughs> wrong! <laughs> so I hauled off and just gave him a good slap. The only slap I ever laid on him, or dared to. And man, mm. ooh, he just come back at me like, right here, above. And I thought, oh my word! Uh, well, I guess I miscalculated that. Temper's a temper, and I put my child at risk by getting into a fight when I was pregnant. Uh, I never did that again, but, uh, you know, just if someone's got a bad temper, for heaven's sakes, don't expect them to control it, uh, you know, do extra. So anyway, uh, I had to talk this morning how because I, I have to think every day now, uh, can I stand some of his, uh, oh, especially when he starts bullying me. Oh, I can't stand that. And, you know, he just tries to run over. And uh, I just can't stand that, you know. I, just, I Well, I do have to defend myself. I have to not let his him overwhelm, overwhelm uh, my defenses so I don't defend what I think I should be doing, how I think I should be talking, or how I want to put myself out to the public. Because he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care as much as I do. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> right? Well, first of all, <laughs> I'm not trying to publish anything. I'm not trying to yeah, that's do the anything. Truth. I see it. I had retired many years ago, and because I don't feel like painting anymore, I don't have to. Uh, do I need the money? Well, no, not really. You could sell security, you know. So, uh, what's the point? But she's still plugging away, you know, day after day, trying to figure out how you can uh, do whatever it is that you want to do. And yeah, I'd like to see you make it. I'd like to see you uh, get out there and uh, if you're, uh, well, I'd rather not have my name published, you know, quite frankly. <laughs> There's a reason for that, but, uh, well, I mean, well, I, I, care, I care about the fact that, that you, you need to get out there, but I don't, I try to give you some advice and you just want to. <laughs> oh, well. Well, yeah. You're I, bullying me. You're trying to tell me what to do. No, I don't mind advice, advice, but you you go further than advice. So just but, you know, he just, what I mean is bullying is he really forcefully, is very forceful about put that out there, put that out there. And I say, no, I'm not ready. I, I, uh. Would you consider 
when I had my hands around your throat like this, oh, is that bullying or no. is, is yeah. that just gentle, I call that gentle bullying, persuasion, yeah. as we used to call it back <laughs> in the Quaker well, country? Force it. Just force gentle it. persuasion, you know. Well, see, I've always, uh, I've uh, been on a mission my whole life because I have of, uh, well, I have been because I was a victim of a crime when I was a child, and I didn't well, really get to My mission get in life was to find a woman I could live with, and I, <laughs> I, just I finally get... found you, but at least, at least we've got one thing in common. Neither one of us are married, so I kind of like that. <laughs> what a good relationship. You know, just one guy said, you got to go in, what, every few years and get your driver's license renewed? How come you can't get a marriage certificate the same way? That's what I want to know. Mm. 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 Well, when you're on a mission, when you're not, and I claim, uh, and I think that that's uh, one thing that why he didn't watch himself closer. If he'd been more on a mission, he wouldn't have probably wouldn't have become an alcoholic. Right. I think that not being on a mission, not having a purpose, it was easier to just drift into more. Uh, not caring, uh, just indulging yourself. Uh, if you want to have a drink, have a drink. Not really worrying about the effects of it. Well, what and, was your mission? To you see how well, much my weight, mission, weight you could put on before no, you explode? No, or, no, or <laughs> <laughs> no. this definitely wasn't was, my mission. I was on the television the other day. <laughs> this, this, I don't remember if it was a male um, or female. A thousand pounds, folks. Oh, well, they apparently had, they, they were had, on a mission. Uh, they, they were on get, that mission. They this person out the door. They had to take the door off and then open up another floor. Oh, there's, another, there's some they real get obesity, the door. obesity out there. Yeah, more, that'd be morbid obesity. This is one person who <laughs> filled up a queen-size bed, and I mean filled it up. King-size? It had to be king-size. Oh, no, I don't think it's good. Uh, but anyway, uh, what... When when you're on a mission, it was like. Can you imagine the size of the diaper on this thing? <clears throat> you couldn't wear underwear. Uh, it takes too what much. What I was going to, to say it. is, uh, if you're on a mission, uh, my whole life I was trying to get this addressed, and it started with my father, uh, and there again it was like I was raised up in a culture where there were certain men who got into the homosexual thing, but it was very, very secretive and quiet, and uh, instead of coming out, the whole idea was to hide it, hide it, get married, cover it up. Except well, imagine they, the poor women that they married if they the didn't uh, right? yeah, keep it in the closet. And this is the, the bad part of keeping it in the closet. Somebody's going to be the victim, and usually some poor ignorant women who uh, they can be bullied into minding their own business and not in, not looking into the men's affairs. And this is what I grew up seeing happen with my mother even. My mother, I thought, could have been a very, a very powerful woman, but she didn't get honesty from her husband. So she was always frustrated, in the dark, didn't know what, was very dissatisfied with her marriage, but yet the guy, my dad, was too accomplished, too... Uh, hard working, uh, smart, and made money, so she couldn't leave him. And uh, but she didn't know what was why their relationship wasn't working. Is that when you, I knew it? Is it I knew it because this was part of how well, why I was on a mission. You, well, your mission I knew was it to by encounters the with his of, partner, chief of the police and of the yes, uh, yeah. So this. Caused me to uh, Bisexual be group. very You're frustrated because police, I didn't, right? I couldn't discuss it with my mother uh, because oh. of the relationship was too uh, volatile. It was too dangerous, and so got, had to go all my life not talking about this, and almost like just being an observer. And if it had stopped then. If it's just been my dad, I might not have gotten on this mission. But when I got to college, I ran into this again with professors that I felt had doing the same thing as my dad did. They were in uh, theater and in uh, 
literature. Places where... I hate to be the uh, one to bring this up again, but... Yeah, well, anyway, that same every, thing happened every again. Every university has the that. The women... That's the part the, they go for. The, the theater, girl students. English, yes, poetry. yes, English. Okay, I've been well, that happened to be my talent. My talent, so here I was, uh, up against professors have who were going to favor, and because they were, uh, oh, I had quite a lot to do with uh, my professor's family, so I knew what his relationship with his wife was, and it didn't look good. I mean, it was like my, it reminded me so much of my mother and dad. I never knew, that I, I never knew I one just, of my professors. <laughs> what their home but, life was and quite frankly but, but, once I left the classroom I don't what they well, did in their home life. When you go out on the road and you're in plays uh, and I was in plays with her uh, one of the ways that he kept her happy was to give her toss her a roll every now and then and let her perform and then she was I'm happy. I'm going to assume we're not talking but about I, a bun or anything. I, uh, like I saw that. how the lies the secrecy it damaged. It damaged his relationships, not only with her, but with his students. He couldn't be, he was a, a man who was covering up and he expected the students to, you know, if they detected it, go along with it. And to me, when you've got marriage covering up, that kind of thing, you've got something bad. Uh, this is why I'm all for coming out, coming out, just honesty. Honesty is so important in anything. Uh, it's so important to keep, keep talking, keep being able to tell people what you're all about. And the person who's gay or homosexual, like my dad, they have to make up their mind that they're going to give up respectability for honesty. Well, my dad obviously wasn't, you know, he, it was, dealing with him was like dealing with a crazy man. He wanted you to think he was something that he was not. And he was absolutely determined that you would, nobody could ever, you know, ever, ever say that thing that he was actually really involved in. And we had to act like we didn't even know that existed. We were totally ignorant because my dad would not allow us to ever, ever go in that, go to that place. So I, all my life is on a mission, trying to get people to recognize <laughs> honesty. Honesty is so important. When I squirt this, time's up. Mm -hmm. I love it with hydrochloric acid, folks. She's going to scream like crazy when this burns. Oh, well, it's hard. See, he's, he's hard to restrain sometimes. <laughs> you have to be a really strong character in order to hold your own with this man. That's who, true. I with, never... <laughs> Who, without even trying, can just... <laughs> and she's... <laughs> Whatever her problem is... is <laughs> One of her grandsons once used to take him out. He had a dog collar and a leash on. <laughs> come back here. Come back here. Come back. Come here. She thinks oh, every man she's going a, to... she thinks every man she ever leash. meets needs to be on a leash. Well, I sometimes kind of do if they get completely out of control. So, <laughs> see, that's why I can say, down, down. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see how that goes. Well, you, now I'll see if I can put this one up. Oh, you can put it up. Trust me. It, it'll, it'll be just sweet. Ah. Uh -huh.